So Margaret, what prompted this site investigation? Well, we were investigating a site down the road from here and we had installed a, a well right across the street beside this facility and monitoring well. It turned out to have six parts per million benzene in it. It's pretty high. Uh, it's pretty high and we knew it wasn't coming from the other facility. So we started investigation at this facility. What kind of techniques did you all use? Well, we started out with our usual soil borings. We did five soil borings. That was our first mobilization. And then of course we followed that up with a monitoring well installation. We did four monitoring wells. So that was two. And then um, we went back out um, because we had dissolved contamination of leaning levels as well as soil too. Right. Um, we went back out and we installed some more monitoring wells to see if we could delineate the plume. And while we were there with that, we went ahead and installed recovery wells because we knew we would have to put a corrective action system out there, dual right. phase. Right. So after we installed those wells, we went out and gauged the wells and then all of a sudden, not do we just have dissolved contamination, now we have um, LNAPL. Yeah, okay. And uh, we had as much as four and a half feet in one Yikes. of the wells. So. We started running the system and then we thought we'd try to delineate the plume one more time and we went back out. Uh, this was the fifth time we'd gone out because we did have to replace another monitoring well. We put one more well in and guess what showed up? More an apple. More an apple. So we still obviously have a problem out there and I, we just really don't know where to go from here. Do you have any suggestions how we can investigate this in a, a better, more efficient way? Well, there's an advanced site characterization tool document that ITRC has put out recently. Why don't we take a look at that and see what that uh, can do for us. Okay. Well, let's see. I can just pull that up here. I think that there's a matrix that you can plug uh, your site characteristics into, and then okay. it will tell you what tools are most likely to be applicable to your Okay, site. that's right there. It looks like um, definitely laser-induced fluorescence would be very helpful out here. And then we can just pick one of those tools. What about this... Uh, ultraviolet optical screening tool. Do you know anything about that? I think it uses uh, fluorescence similar to LIF. The LIF tool is deployed in the field using direct push methods. This can be with CPT or percussion, for example, geoprobe type rigs. The tool is attached to the end of the drilling rods and pushed directly into the ground rather than rotated. While not common, LIF and other advanced site characterization tools can also be used in softer bedrock. And for hard bedrock, it is possible to use them in pre-drilled holes that are backfilled with loose materials such as organoclay granules. This is a close-up of the detector instruments and the driller holding the LIF tool during setup. As the tool is steadily pushed into the ground, laser light is emitted from a fiber optic cable through a side window made of sapphire onto the soil face. This light causes any non-aqueous phase liquid, or NAPL, that contains polyaromatic hydrocarbons to fluoresce, and this fluorescence is captured by another fiber optic cable behind the window and transmitted to a detector. Shown here is a very low background response to LIF due to fluorescent material unrelated to site contamination. You can just barely see the colored peaks at the bottom of the white area. Here the drilling crew is adding a rod to continue drilling deeper. At this depth, NAPL is present, and the detector shows a strong response in real time that is separated in a color spectrum on four wavelength channels, the ratios of which help identify the type of NAPL. On the left is the LIF log, showing the average color for the detected NAPL. At this depth, a second NAPL plume is detected with a strong signal. You can see that the separated waveforms on the right are different, and the LIF log to the left shows a different average color, indicating that this is a different type of NAPL. Here is a moderate LIF response to a mineral layer that fluoresces, which must be distinguished from NAPL detections using site knowledge including boring logs, sample results, and analysis of the LIF data. The detector analyzes the fluorescence and determines its intensity, decay rate, and color, this information tells us approximately how much NAPL is present and what its possible composition is. For example, fresh gasoline colors are more blue, while heavier hydrocarbons fluoresce more green to red. The amount of fluorescence depends not only on how much NAPL is present and the type of NAPL, but also on the lithology, 
or the type of soil, and its porosity. Other natural and anthropogenic materials also fluoresce, so it is important to observe and log the soil carefully and thoroughly so you can distinguish between apple and other materials in the ground. Man, you should have been out there. It was so cool. Look, let me just show you. Look at some of these logs. That's what we were seeing in real time. They had a trunk line running from the downhole tool up to the truck, okay. up to the machines right. in the truck. And then you could see these come out just in real time. And we had a plan before we went out there to do a specific grid. But once we started poking holes, that kind of flew out the window because then we could really see exactly where things were, what depth and we were able to move around where we needed to. So you were using the information as you got it yes. to determine where you would go next. It was fantastic. And so then, as you can see, right here where this red, all that is, that was the higher intensity stuff. Mm -hmm. And as we just kept poking holes, we just kept finding an apple all over the place. I think we only had one hole that we, that we did that didn't show anything. Um, but now you can see what we're dealing with a lot better than if we had just kept going out there chasing right. a plume with Taking borings so and monitoring wells and, and yeah so and this was this was uh, you know took a lot less time and a lot less money in the long run so now that we know what we're dealing with I think we can definitely work more on a better remedial design I think um, you're right we could either put some more recovery wells in this area here or we may want to choose something else we can discuss that sounds yeah, like we a had good this plan. data yeah it's awesome